Okay, this is part three of uh, the video tutorial series we'll be doing on uh, this little animation uh, where we uh, cover all the steps of the process from concept to creation, or I guess animation to creation since we didn't cover modeling. Um, so uh, what we're going to be doing this time is going to be setting up render passes. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, for this animation we'll be setting up a diffuse pass or a beauty pass uh, an ambient occlusion pass, uh, and we'll make sure we export our diffuse frames as RPFs, and we'll probably set up a uh, specular pass as well. Um, so we're going to uh, open up our render settings here, change our uh, our sampling quality for we've got mental ray, mental ray as our renderer. We're going to change our sampling quality to 64, so we don't get any aliasing going on. Uh, we've got shadows turned on, uh, just simple. Uh, uh, just simple shadow map shadows that'll that'll do pretty well. Uh, the soft shadows will simulate with our ambient occlusion. So uh, I'll be using back burner to render things. Uh, we could just render right in Max, but I have two machines here. So what I'll be doing is I'll be kicking off renders, and then uh, when those renders are rendering on the other machine, I'll continue working on this one and explaining uh, uh, the process of uh, setting up renders and whatnot. So in our render settings, we want to make sure we're rendering our whole sequence. Uh, we want to change the resolution to something that uh, is a little more uh, bigger and appealing. 960 by 540. We're going to make sure everything's in the frame at all times that we want to see. Maybe we can back out the camera a little bit. We do have a camera set up, but it's, it's purely stationary. And um, so I think everything stays in frame right now, and this should be pretty good. Just want to make sure we've got the safe frames turned on. We don't want stuff to go outside the safe frame because. If this was for broadcast, uh, that would mean it would be, be getting cut off on the screen. So, so that that's probably about good there. We're going to save our output, and we've got our folder here. We're going to create a new renders folder. Mm. And of course, uh, I pressed enter too soon. Sometimes XP lags a little bit behind when you create new folders, but there we go. And uh, oops, we're going to uh, create a folder called beauty. This is, once again, there's there. <laughs> we're going to uh, use this folder to save our diffuse beauty frames. We're going to uh, make RPF files. <coughs> and uh, here's the settings for RPF images. We've got bits per channel 8 will be fine. Uh, we also want to have optional channels Z depth and velocity turned on. Um, actually, in this case, we probably don't need Z depth. Z depth would be for depth of field. Uh, so we can probably turn that one off and just keep velocity on. This velocity will give us our velocity channel so that we can add motion blur later, later using the Real Smart Motion Blur plugin um, from Revision. Um, so now that we've got that set up, we can turn on Net Render and then we'll click Render and our render settings will come up. Um, so we'll just call this pass uh, Ball Beauty and then um, connect to our. Uh, the computer's name is Slave. It looks like the manager isn't turned on, so we'll VNC. This is using remote desktop uh, over to our other computer. Open up the manager, and then try to reconnect. And now we're connected to the manager. We can submit our job. So that'll submit our job to the manager, and now the other machine will start rendering it because the other machine also has a server opened up on it, and the server is what actually does the rendering. Um, so we're going to save it. We're going to save a copy of this file and save it as ball three underscore AO for ambient occlusion. Now we're going to set up our ambient occlusion pass. So we want to keep our renderer as mental ray. We want to go to the processing tab up top, do a, a material override, and then set up a new ambient occlusion material. And that way, um, we can basically replace all the materials in the scene with an ambient occlusion material without actually. Uh, changing the materials applied to the objects. So we're going to select ambient occlusion, put it in our diffuse slot, change the samples to 64 so we don't get too much grain. Also change the self-illumination of the shader to 100%. And then uh, we will drag this over to our material override slot, do an instance so that if we make any changes they propagate over to the uh, slot over here. And then just do a quick test render um, somewhere where the ball is expanded there and make sure that we're getting uh, a good amount of soft shading going on uh, but we don't want things too dark uh, but we can always of course adjust that later in the uh, compositing application of our choice so uh, it's going to uh, go through and render this frame here but so far from what I can see on the left hand side it's looking okay 
Um, we might actually might be a good idea just to turn the spread or sorry the max distance uh, change it to a custom setting uh, basically this will uh, right now it's it's that'll set a threshold for how far away objects have to be in order for it to calculate ambient occlusion for them so that max distance is a little bit small maybe if we change it up to about 35 before we were getting a lot of dark gray areas but this will help us to sort of uh, isolate really just the just the sort of crease or corner areas that we want to be uh, occluded so um, that's almost there maybe we can turn it maybe we can just uh, turn that up a little bit higher maybe to about 50 and uh, hopefully this should bring it a little bit closer uh, we just want it to a point where uh, the, the the open surfaces that aren't pressing up against any other objects are basically white so um, that's looking pretty good. Just bump it up a little bit more, but I'm sure that'll be fine. So once we turn up to 60, now we're ready to render. So uh, we're going to go back to our render settings up here. Uh, we can keep the uh, the uh, time output the same, the resolution the same. We're just going to change our file. And you can already see there's three frames in here because the other computer's already started rendering. So now we're going to make a new folder called Ambient Occlusion. We're going to change the output format to Targas. We don't need another RPF sequence. Uh, because the other frames will contain all the RPF data that we need and we're going to kick off this the same way as we did before just basically connect to the manager, submit the job and then there we're done so one more pass that it might be nice to do if we just save that one and resave this one as ball 3 specular is a pass where we basically because all the materials are metal we will isolate um, sort of the specular of these materials and of course specular it's just a way of faking glossy reflections that you'd see in real life. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create another material and we're going to make the material black and give it a really high but really tight specular. So uh, specular level is about 600 but glossiness is about 80. So then we're going to open up our render settings and make sure our other material override is turned off. And we're actually just going to change the renderer overall. So we're going to make it, we're going to turn it back to the scanline renderer the reason we're using Metal Ray before is because since we have reflections on some of our objects, um, uh, Metal Ray can crank through ray tracing a lot faster than Scanline Renderer can, so, so, but because we don't have reflections here, we don't need it. So we're going to turn off shadows, um, mapping we can keep on, and uh, now we're just going to ap apply that black material to all of our objects. And of course, because we saved a new file, uh, if we want the old materials, we can always revert back to the other file. So. Um, now we can see that we're sort of isolating some of the uh, specular amounts. But uh, the outside paint material, we don't really need a high specular on because that, that's sort of a, a flat paint shader. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the objects that are part of the sort of casing of the robot and just apply a black material. So that way only, the, only things like the inner parts have that high specular. And it's going to be very subtle. You can't see it in a whole lot of shots. You can sort of see the, the bright white line there, the little dot there. Uh, but it'll be subtle enough that uh, it'll just add that little bit of extra detail that we need. It uh, looks like the inner sphere is casting a little bit too much specular, so we'll turn that one off too. So now just the metal pistons we can even see in the viewport. Uh, they're what are uh, receiving all the specular attention. So that, that looks pretty cool, and that'll help us to give it, once again, that sort of metal look. So uh, now that we've got this pass set up, actually our rotor blades, we can probably uh, disable the uh, specular for as well. So we'll just apply that black material, material. But now that we've got that set up, we can kick off this pass. And we're going to call it our specular pass. And specular.tga, once again using targas. Kick off a net render. Connect to the manager, submit the job. And we will now wait. So part four will be covering the actual compositing, which is the last step, uh, because in this one we've kicked off all the renders. So tune in for part four, and we'll uh, cover the final step of the process, and uh, we'll see how this little animation that we've created in a couple of hours actually looks when it's done.